So I start medical school in four months. Like this is so crazy. It's so exciting. Um, I don't know what inspired me to make this video, but I've been like, you know, more neurotic than usual. I always thought I was pretty chill. I don't really like panic a lot. I don't really like overthink things, but lately I've been looking things up, uh, you know, in regards to starting medical school and tips and advice. And I'm like, I'm starting to get a little bit more neurotic. Like it's becoming more and more real. I got my orientation date. So for anyone who's keeping up with the channel, I know I still haven't put out like a video kind of summarizing my application cycle. I'm still waiting to hear back from two schools that I thought I would hear back from by December. So uh, it's not looking great, but right now I've put a deposit on a DO school in my hometown. And that's kind of where I'm set to go. Unless, you know, I hear something back from these other schools, then I'll, you know, my decision kind of might, you know, change after that. But right now I got orientation dates from July 28th through August 3rd and then starting class August 4th. So that's a little bit less than five months. So it's about four and a half months until I start medical school. And this is just crazy. Like I, I don't even know what to think and I keep doing all this research. So I'm going to take you guys along today. I'm going to go through some of the things I've been thinking about and like pondering about because, you know, you can tell a pre-med or, you know, a guy who gets into medical school, you know, don't overthink, enjoy the downtime, you know, relax, don't really look too into it. But like, who's not going to look into, you know, good study tips and like resources and stuff on their downtime, you know, I, I'm enjoying my free time. I'm enjoying my gap year. Like, don't get me wrong. But like, I have been looking up a lot of stuff and I'm going to take you guys along with me in this video to kind of like look at some of the stuff I've been looking at, but also, you know, just like showing the thought process because you know, it might be a reality that you get in and that's a reality that I'm facing right now, which if you've been watching since the beginning of my channel, you know, that's a reality I kind of always hoped to get into. And now it's just real. And now I'm like, oh my gosh, like I have to actually go to medical school and become a doctor and become an adult. And that's pretty crazy. So yeah, I'm just gonna make a video, I think once a month maybe um, amongst my other videos about kind of like, you know, updates and kind of my thought processes and things maybe I'm looking up in the interim and you know, it's just crazy and it's a crazy time because of the whole coronavirus thing. I hope you guys are all being safe. I'm gonna remember getting, you know, starting medical school the same year as this whole, you know, pandemic, this whole, uh, you know, state of the nation, all that kind of stuff. And, you know, I hope you guys are all being safe. Again, you know, just practice good hygiene, practice, uh, you know, safe habits, be courteous to the people around you, but don't panic. You know, this isn't a time to panic. In times like this, you kind of just got to stay calm and just like, you know, look at the detailed information, the reputable information. Don't freak out so much. You know, I work in oncology. I work with a lot of immunocompromised patients. And so I'm going to do my part, you know, and stay clean, stay healthy, um, you know, because I'm not the one at risk, really. You know, if you look at the people getting it, you know, it's not the young people who are really, you know, passing away, but it's, it's the older people with other comorbidities and immunocompromised systems. And it's, you know, we just gotta be courteous to them. But you know, in times like this, you just can't panic. You just gotta relax. But anyway, this video is not about the coronavirus. I'm gonna take you guys along with me for some of my neurotic thought processes. I'm gonna switch over to the webcam right now and kind of show you my browser and some of the stuff I've been looking at. So uh, yeah, here we go. We're at the computer now, we're at the setup, and I've got on my screen some things I wanna buy for medical school. Now this is a little bit over the top, but like you, it's hard to get into medical school and not think, okay, what do I want for medical school? What's gonna like make this whole thing comfortable? Because I wanna be a comfortable medical student. You know, I'm gonna be studying a lot. I'm gonna be reading a lot of stuff. And I'm like, I want some, you know, I want some good stuff. I want some, you know, it's probably not practical because money, but it's always nice to, to look around and kind of get ideas for things. I don't know if I'm going to end up buying these, but one of the biggest ones that I've always thought if I get into med school, I'm going to, I'm going to want is a MacBook Pro. And, you know, I'm going to want, if any of you guys use MacBooks, like, you know, please comment below what you guys think of them. I, I need to know. I don't have a lot of experience with Mac. In fact, I use a Windows PC, but I've really wanted to switch to MacBook because I, you know, I love my setup here, but I really want a dedicated setup. I need something powerful that I can take mobile with me to medical school. I, you know, I've been using this, um, let me grab it right here. I've been using this Chromebook for undergrad and it's great. You know, I take all my notes on Google Chrome, but it's, it's not a powerful system and it's not going to be able to handle lectures, PowerPoints, all that kind of stuff. This is a great budget, you know laptop for anyone who needs like a $150 laptop and that just links to Google and Google Drive and everything. But I, I kind of want something powerful. So I was thinking about switching to MacBook or buying a MacBook. Um, here's the new one. Uh, you know, if you guys think it's better to buy an older one or you just get a new one and future proof myself for a little bit, just let me know what you guys think. I don't know much about MacBooks, but I've always liked the idea of getting one. 
Uh, a lot of like the med school YouTubers I look up to, they all use Apple stuff, and you know, I kind of thought about maybe getting an iPad to take like notes and annotate, and you know, have kind of more of a tablet that also you know links well with the MacBook. Now this this might be over the top, but I mean, if you're gonna have a MacBook and you're gonna have a home setup, you want to have you know a nice monitor, right? <laughs> so I was looking at maybe getting like an ultra wide. I have, you know, I've got my monitors. I have a triple monitor, but it's it's kind of more of a gaming setup here. I was like, maybe you know, one single monitor ultra wide that I can dock the MacBook in and then, you know, study. And you know, these are luxuries. Most med students they don't really get to live in luxury. I'm I'm no exception. Like I I shouldn't be thinking, oh yeah, I'm gonna spend five thousand dollars on stuff I don't need but I mean the idea is nice it's nice to window shop and I, I am genuinely thinking about buying this stuff you know I'm working right now in my gap year so you know if I want to I can but I definitely if you guys have any input for things that you guys are gonna that you guys think are helpful let me know and then I was also looking at getting um, some noise kill oh, that's the same thing some noise canceling headphones because I have AirPods and they're great, but if I'm going to be spending a lot of time studying, I want something a little bit more comfortable in my ear. And I was kind of thinking noise canceling headphones might be a great idea. These are probably, I don't know if these are overpriced. I don't know what's a good price for noise canceling headphones, um, but these are Amazon's top choice and they've got great reviews. So if you guys have recommendations, let me know. That's what I was thinking. I was like, oh, I'm going to med school in a few months. I should buy things. Don't know why that's a thought process, but it's like, I want to be, I want to be kind of comfortable. Like if I'm going to be spending all my days studying, like I want to, you know, I want to kind of be prepared and, you know, maybe I'm just excited and jumping the gun, but that's kind of what I was looking at. Um, so if you have any experience with Mac products, like, let me know. That'd be super helpful because I, I literally know nothing about, um, you know, Apple and MacBooks and whatnot. So, uh, you know, and this is like just me being neurotic, you know, med school starts in four months and I'm like, I want to have good study habits. I really, you know, that's probably the hardest thing you hear from most med, school, med students. Most first years I talk to is like the hardest part is figuring out how they're going to study, getting into a routine. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to, oh, I'm going to like, you know, try to maybe find some good advice. And so, you know, if you guys use Reddit, Reddit's an amazing resource, you know, top scoring med, stu med students use it and it's helpful. They, they really post things uh, that are really helpful. And there's a lot of Anki decks. You know, one thing I don't want to do, and I, I talk about this in my uh, in my MCAT video, was that I spent a lot of time when I was studying for the MCAT making Anki cards that I never used. And that really was like a heads up to me that was like, yo, don't reinvent the wheel. Like if people have made resources, use their resources and streamline things. And I feel like that'll work for me. Some people have to make their cards. Some people have to write things down. I, I definitely feel, especially after the MCAT, that I'm more of one of those people that I feel like I can, you know, use more streamlined material and save myself time. And so the number one thing I see is like Zanky and everyone's like, use this Zanky deck. And apparently this is like a king deck and it's made to like, what I made a note. I said, use during first year. So basically use during, I, I don't know what's in it. One of these days, I kind of want to just download it and see what's in it. Um, but I guess people use it for physiology, pathology, microbiology, pharmacology. That's like, Zanke is like across everything I found on Reddit. Like if I look up like how to prepare for first year, like I find Zanke on every single post. So um, that's definitely, I like that. I like that it's like used by everyone. I don't know how many cards, I think it's like 20,000 cards, I think. And I like that, like the consensus of people really agree that's like use this, use Zanke um, during your first year. And uh, first aid, uh, to correlate with material, I hear a lot of like, you know, whenever you're going over material in class, correlate it with first aid, go through it. That's another resource that teaches you the same material. And there's probably Anki cards that correlate with first aid. It's kind of hard because it's going to be really impossible to do every resource. You can't do every resource. You just got to kind of find ones that are good for you and hope that are good for you. I found Neater's Anatomy flashcards. Um, that was something you know people were saying to do with anatomy. This one it was kind of like 50-50. Some people were like, "Yeah, I use Neater." Some people were like, "No, don't use it." Um, I, maybe it's not. I don't think it's as in depth as from what I've heard. You know, if you're a med student, and you're watching this. I don't know why you'd be watching me if I'm if you're a med student because I am. I am so far under you. But you know, if you have any input on that, let me know. If you if you're watching this video and you've done your own research, uh, let me know. Sketchy micro. So sketchy. Um, Sketchy, I've definitely heard of. I've already, I've already planned on using Sketchy to prepare for my 
for boards and stuff in terms of like micro. I've heard such good things about it. I mean, just just look at these like cartoons and stuff. It's just so cool. Um, and I guess it's like really easy to watch videos that really explain things really well. And I'm really excited to use it. This was another one of those things across the board, Sketchy Micro and Sketchy Farm, that everyone says to use. And so I know I'm going to be putting it into my studying, especially when preparing for boards. And um, I'm going to do more research over the next month, and I'll let you guys know next month what I kind of come up with for more resources. Again, I might not use any of this. I might not stick to any plan, but I really want to get into a good plan. My goal is I found a lot of really awesome, inspiring posts about students who were able to figure out their plan, you know, study, no, no later than 6 or 7 p.m. You know, every day and have their evenings off and then maybe even take Saturdays off. And that's kind of something I want to do. I want to try to get into a routine off the bat if I can as soon as possible where I you know I stop studying at a certain time and maybe have like my entire Saturdays off because I feel like that's so good for your mental health. That's so good for, you know, the stress and whatnot. And, you know, with, uh, you know, with step one possibly being pass fail the year that I take it, I want to... I still want to be prepared. I'm still going to study as hard as I can as if it was scored because it still might be scored. You know, it said earliest is January 2022. You know, it might not be pass fail in 2022, but we'll see. So I still want to be as prepared as possible. And this is this is what it looks like when you're neurotic and you're, you know, starting to look things up. And, you know, if you're if you get into med school, you're going to you're probably going to do the exact same thing. You're, you're going to look up things. And that's kind of the point I'm at. And I'll spend the next month definitely looking other things up. But this is kind of what I've been doing is just like, you know, doing a lot of like hypotheticals and, you know, speculation. But now that I'm four months out, like it's, it's very real. So I'm going to be doing a lot of this. So um, that's kind of my updates for now. You know, I, I'm going to make another video in a month kind of more with more progress and hopefully more news and whatnot. But along the way, I'll make other videos as well, including my entire application. Uh, even, I haven't heard back from these last two schools and I wanted to wait, but I think, you know, it's getting late and a lot of you guys are going to be applying in the next couple months. So I kind of just want to get those videos out so you guys have stuff to kind of look, look towards and whatnot. So be ready for that. So yeah, that's about it. That's all I got for this video. You know, thank you guys for watching. I'm so excited that we have like 800 subscribers now, which is crazy to me. It's crazy to me that, you know, you guys, if you're watching actively, you're going to watch me go through medical school and it means so much. And it's like, it's almost more inspiring because it makes me really want to you know, just work as hard as I can and do my best because I want to, you know, set a good example and, you know, make people excited to kind of be in the same position. So thank you guys. If you guys have subscribed and, you know, are watching, I, I really appreciate it. It's awesome. I, I really, you know, I'm, I'm just so happy about it. So anyways, thanks for watching. I will see you guys next time.